All right, well, let's get started. My name is Carl Fisher. I'm the Communications Coordinator for Contra Costa Health. I'm here today with Dr. Mira Srinivasan, one of our Deputy Health Officers in Contra Costa County, and also Paul Leung, who's our Communicable Disease Program Chief for Contra Costa Health. Um, just have a couple of housekeeping items here at the beginning. Uh, first, uh, please do save your questions until the end of the presentation. We're just going to talk for a few minutes and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. Um, if you do have a question, you could put it into the Q&A field that is on your display, or you can just raise your hand and we'll call on you. Um, later on, for people who can't make it, uh, we are going to have a recording of this media conference available at the CC Health YouTube channel. Um, and also right now, the media release that goes along with this media conference is available at cchealth.org under the latest news section. Um, and before we get started, I did want to mention, uh, because we need to respect medical privacy, uh, we're not going to get into the details of uh, who these cases are or even how they're necessary, necessarily related to one another. Uh, so I just wanted to prepare you for that. Uh, but we do have plenty of good information and we do appreciate you coming and helping us get out this important health information to our community. And with that, um, I'd like to pass it to Dr. Srinivasan. Thank you, Carl. Thank you everyone for coming. I wanted to start off with saying that the reason we are here today is because we were recently notified by the California Department of Public Health about 10 individuals of tuberculosis from Contra Costa and neighboring counties that were linked by DNA testing. DNA testing of all TB isolates is standard procedure throughout the country for all individuals who have TB. These individuals um, were not recently diagnosed, but what is new is that we, through the course of our investigation, were able to determine that they all spent time inside the California Grand Casino in Pacheco between the years of 2018 and 2023. We are using this opportunity to spread information to those who might have been exposed so that they are able to access resources for testing and know what to do for the next steps to keep themselves healthy. <clears throat> First of all, the risk of transmission of TB in the community remains low. It is always difficult to determine when someone was exposed exactly and that's because TB can live in a person for many years without causing any symptoms. But many years or mo months later, that person can get sick with TB. Uh, and at that point, when they are sick, they can become, become contagious. However, prior to that, they are not contagious and they do not have symptoms. They are infected with the tuberculosis bacteria. And if they get treatment at that point, that stage of TB is called inactive TB or latent TB infection, treating it at that point will prevent them from becoming sick later and contagious. <clears throat> I want to point out that nothing about the business themselves has put individuals at increased risk. It is really just a factor of how this bacteria is spread. It's spread through close contact of individuals. When someone who is infected with the bacteria is contagious, they can spread it through coughing, talking, laughing to others who then come in contact with the air that has a bacteria in it. That individual can then inhale it into their lungs and become infected. But as mentioned, it can take many years before that individual then becomes sick with the bacteria. So we're using this opportunity to let those know who are exposed to please, act, uh, to please reach out to their providers and let them know that they were exposed and that they do now need TB screening and TB testing. I'd also like to note that the management team at the casino has been partnering with us. They have been um, working with us side by side throughout the investigation to ensure that their staff and patrons are, are, um, are safe and um, know what to do for next steps. We were um, recently, uh, through the course of the investigation, we recently identified an additional individual with TB, but this person um, has not uh, had genetic testing, so we do not know yet if they're a genetic match. They did, however, spend time at the casino. The first reported um, case of TB for this um, group of individuals was in 2018, 
and of course, most recently up until 2023. Again, um, we are using this opportunity to let those who have uh, let those know who have been exposed to be able to um, then tell their providers that they have been exposed to tuberculosis and that they do now need TB symptom screening and TB testing. <clears throat> um, I now would like to pass oh, um, pass it on to my colleague um, Paul Liang. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for your interest and for your help in informing our community. I wanted to emphasize um, something that Dr. Srinivasan mentioned earlier. Um, TB is spread when TB germs are inhaled. It's really important to know that TB is not spread by a shared items. It can't be carried elsewhere through shoes or clothing or other types of items. It's also really important to keep in mind that although TB or tuberculosis can cause serious illness, it is treatable and curable with medicine. The only way someone would know that they have TB is to get a test, and early detection and treatment is better than late detection and treatment. Not everyone who becomes infected with TB develops active tuberculosis disease, but that risk of progressing to active TB at some point in their life does not go away. People who have latent TB infection can progress and develop active TB disease years after they were initially infected. And progression to active TB disease can also be triggered by changes in someone's health. So a person who does develop active TB disease may have symptoms such as persistent or bloody cough, unexplained weight loss, fever, chills, and night sweats. A person who has active TB disease in their lung is contagious and can unknowingly spread it to other people. When that person with active TB breathes, speaks, sings, or coughs, Droplets are produced that contain the TB bacteria that go into the air and they can float and linger like smoke or perfume um, up to two hours in the air. When another person breathes in those droplets that contain TB bacteria, they can become infected uh, with tuberculosis. We're strongly stressing that early detection of TB is very beneficial. A TB infection, a latent TB infection, is easier to treat and takes less time compared to active TB disease. It's still important to know that people with active TB disease, although treatment may be more complicated and it may take longer and the symptoms can be more serious, even active TB can be treated and can be cured. So people in our community who think they may have been exposed to TB should talk to their healthcare provider about it. And if there are uninsured community members who are concerned about their TB exposure, they can call us, Contra Costa Public Health, at 925-313-6740. I'll now hand it back to Carl Fisher. Great, thanks, Paul. Um, so at this point, uh, we're happy to take your questions. Again, you can either put them into the Q&A field or raise your hand. All right. Let's see, um, our first question, uh, uh, and uh, I think this is uh, fine for, uh, for, for you, Doctor. Uh, have the 11 people recovered and uh, were they severe, moderate or mild cases and, and did anyone die? You know, um, as Carl mentioned, we are, are not going to go into any details about the individuals. Um, you know, I think it, it just really what this cluster of individuals points to is that, um, T, again, you know, overall risk in the community is low, but there are individuals who um, can become contagious and in a appropriate setting, such as an indoor setting, it does become um, easier for them to spread it to others. 
a quick reminder to panelists. So when you answer a question, go ahead and uh, um, please do uh, turn your camera on. Right. Um, Apologies. Oh, no, no worries. <laughs> um, Carl, could I add on to that please. response? Is I think that's one of the reasons why we want to inform the community is early detection and treatment is so important because once someone progresses to active TB disease, they can become very ill. They may need to spend time in the hospital. It is possible that someone could die from untreated tuberculosis. Um, and that's why we're really encouraging folks who may have been exposed to TB to get tested now. If they were infected, they can be treated and that can prevent them from ever having the risk of progressing and developing active TB disease later in life where they could become very ill, they might miss work, they might need to be in the hospital, they might actually unknowingly spread TB to other people, including their loved ones, their family, their friends, and their coworkers. Great, thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, are there any signs of antibiotic resistant strains of TB in this cluster? Uh, Dr. Srinivasan, you want to take that one? Sure, thanks, Carl. No, this is not a, um, a strain or an isolate of resistant tuberculosis. This is what we refer to as sensitive tuberculosis. And um, a quick follow-up from the earlier question. Um, can we say when the most recent uh, case was diagnosed from this group? You know, again, I think that is um, details that I are too um, personal. And um, again, we want to protect the um, identity and the um, information of the individuals who um, have been affected. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, um, perhaps uh, it, it, this next question then might uh, might work uh, is um, uh, wh when were we notified about uh, about the relationship between the cases? And and then when did the county recognize the relationship between the cases and the casino, the location? So we first became aware of this group of individuals and relationship with the casino in 2021. And we had conducted an investigation at that time as well. And then most uh, recently in 2023, we were notified of the state of additional individuals who became part of this group. Um, and, and sorry, what was the second part? I, and oh, when, oh. Uh, right, how, how, when did we relate it to the casino uh, or the location, yeah. Sure, so uh, with the second notification this year, we were able to um, again confirm the uh, that individuals had spent time in the casino as well. Okay, um, one more question. Uh, hey, um, Paul, would you mind answering this one? Uh, are, are you seeing lower levels of TB vaccination uh, following the pandemic um, um, when many people or kids weren't necessarily going in to, to get their shots or to get regular health care? Uh, and uh, is there some skepticism about vaccinations potentially involved? Sure, that's a good question. Um, so there is a TB vaccine called BCG that may be given to children who are born in countries where TB is much more common. It may prevent them from getting severe TB disease as children. It is not a routinely recommended vaccine for people in the United States. So people born in the US, children in the US do not receive BCG vaccine. Uh, another important uh, piece of information related to BCG vaccine is if you were born in another country and received BCG vaccine, if you get the TB skin test, you may get a false positive. It may actually react to the BCG vaccine as opposed to a past TB infection. And that's why we strongly recommend anyone who has had BCG vaccine before to get the TB blood test instead the TB blood test will not have a false positive in someone who has received BCG vaccine. Great, thank you. Let's see. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a question. Uh, uh, Mira, maybe you want to take this one. Uh, 
How, how did you determine the 300 people to contact and can you describe the genetic aspect? So I think that's two different questions is like how did the uh, how did the contact investigation work and uh, uh, how to describe the, uh, uh, the the you know how the genetic linking of the cases? Sure. So the, the 300 individuals refers to the potential um, of those individuals who are exposed. So again, by partnering with the casino, as I mentioned earlier, with their management, they have been helping us to make sure that the staff involved um, have um, have been notified. And so we were uh, we are actively reaching out to staff so that uh, as we you know, we did this in 2021, and again, now to make sure that they um, are informed so that they can go to their providers and get the adequate uh, TB screening and TB testing that we um, are asking so that we can determine if they were infected after this exposure. And then separately, the TB DNA testing um, as I had mentioned, it's standard for individuals who have TB disease, meaning these are individuals who are sick with TB, they're contagious with TB. And in those individuals across the country, one standard, one of the standard ways that we control um, TB in this country, because we overall have low transmission and we want to keep it that way, is <clears throat> when those individuals um, cough up the bacteria, we are able to isolate the bacteria in the lab. And these are bacteria that have DNA in them. And through a process called whole genome sequencing, we can then match different individuals' DNA with another person's um, TB DNA. And that is done for all isolates in the country. Anyone who has TB has that done. And that is done through a coordinated effort with the local health department, with the state health department, and the federal health department, which is the Centers for Disease Control. Thank you. It looks like uh, we've got a hand up. Uh, Jenna, do you want to come off mute? Sure. Actually, I wasn't sure, so I put it into uh, the Q&A. But I was oh. wondering, and I apologize if you already addressed this, because I, I came in midstream, but are there any uh, public health takeaways from this particular incident that other casinos, businesses, you know, big events, um, gatherings should be considering or, or adopting in terms of um, trying to prevent something like this from happening? Great question. Do you want to answer that one, Paul? Yes, that's a great question. I uh, want to be really clear that uh, although this cluster may have an association with some people who associate with this casino, there's nothing inherently risky about visiting casinos that increases your risk of tuberculosis. It's really about sharing indoor air for long periods of time with someone who unknowingly has contagious TB and hasn't been treated yet. So any type of indoor setting when you're with other people for long periods of time, or maybe for multiple visits for long periods of time, uh, you could be at risk of being exposed to TB. And those who have contagious TB, at some point, they were only infected with TB and they could have been tested and treated. Um, so that's sort of where we're focusing on is people now may have likely been exposed to active TB and they should go see their doctor and get tested. And if they are known to be TB infected, they can be treated. And so they never have to worry about becoming sick with contagious TB disease later. Um, so just want to be really clear that it has nothing to do specifically with activities that occur in a casino. It's more about lots of different people gathering, sharing indoors air, breathing the same air for long periods of time, maybe for multiple visits or, uh, or regularly um, breathing uh, air from other people. So this could happen uh, in a household. Uh, so an active TB case, oftentimes the people with the greatest exposure are the people who, who live in the same home or apartment. Um, but this could also happen anywhere, right? Perhaps a church where you also gather uh, for long periods of time repeatedly. Um, that's why it's important for people to get screened and tested and treated so they never have to worry about getting active TB 
and unknowingly spreading it to others in their community. Paul, well, I, I got you there. I, I just want to make sure that we fully covered a question that uh, we have here in the Q&A that uh, is along the lines of like, how long does someone have to spend time in an area near a positive, T you know, somebody who has active TB uh, to, uh, to um, you know, potentially have a transmission? Yeah, Mirror may, may be the better one to respond cool. to that. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy to if, if that's more my lane. <laughs> you 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 tell me, uh, Mira. Do, do you know? Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to to take that one. Um, you know, so TB transmission really does require close contact in a closed space, a confined space. We say when folks are outdoors, it's almost impossible to transmit TB. And with regards to a specific timeline. You know, um, it depends on that space itself. Um, airlines industry, airlines use a flight of eight hours um, because they have that good, they have ventilation, good ventilation going through those planes. Um, you know, I would say in, you know, in this situation as, as we're referring to, we're kind of using, um, you know, it has to be close contact for at least 15 minutes or more um, so that, for an individual to, to be considered um, at higher risk of exposure. And again, it would have to be in a, in a setting where another contagious individual had either was currently there coughing or had been in there coughing in the prior two hours. Got it. And uh, it seems like a, you are, you're probably a good person to answer to this uh, next question about uh, if there are some specific groups of people or risk factors who would be uh, more likely to become infected from an exposure? Yeah, yeah, thank you for that question. So in general, um, individuals who are more likely to develop TB disease after being infected, we do have some high risk groups. <clears throat> um, and this is uh, not related to this uh, cluster that we're discussing here. This is across the board for any individual who has been exposed to tuberculosis. Um, we worry most about our young children, uh, those five and uh, children who are under five years of age uh, are unfortunately, um, when they are infected, they can develop disease pretty rapidly and it can be quite severe disease. Um, and this is, uh, Paul had discussed earlier, in countries where there is a lot of TB disease, this is the main reason the BCG vaccine is used, and that is to protect young children from developing severe forms of tuberculosis. We don't use the BCG vaccine in this country because we are a low incidence country. Other individuals who we uh, worry about developing severe TB, TB disease are individuals who are um, on immunosuppressive medications, or have some, um, some other disease that um, compromises their immune system. This uh, TB is a really a disease that is controlled by an individual's immune system. Most commonly though, in this country, individuals who um, develop active tuberculosis disease were exposed many, many years earlier, likely in their um, country of birth where um, most of our um, TB cases come from countries where, of high incidence of TB. And as they get older, their immune system naturally weakens. Um, uh, and that allows the TB bacteria to then kind of escape their immune system and, and cause more severe disease. Um, and then they become very sick and contagious. And that's the most common way most people um, develop TB disease after infection. But again, those individuals five, uh, under five years of age, any individual who <clears throat> has a compromised immune system are the ones who can experience uh, severe disease uh, uh, or, uh, more quickly. And, um, uh, and we worry about them the most as opposed to those who um, are more commonly developed TB disease after a prior exposure. Uh, I think the main point, though, is if caught early, individuals can start treatment for latent TB infection. And, and the reason we 
want individuals to be treated early in the latent or the inactive stage is because number one, they're not sick and they're not contagious and we'd like to keep them that way. The treatment in the inactive or the latent phase is much easier to tolerate. It is fewer medications and it is for a shorter amount of time versus much later if they unfortunately develop TB disease it does require multiple medications and treatment for a much longer time. Great, thank you. Uh, kind of along the lines, there's uh, one, one question here. Somebody's asking, uh, how common is TB in the US relative to other countries? And, and where are the places in the world where it's, it's more common? And then the other part of the question was, uh, whether or not a uh, uh, BCG vaccine has been ever been part of the childhood vaccination uh, routine in the US. So I'll take that last part first. BCG vaccine has uh, never been used in the United States primarily because it, as Paul had mentioned earlier, because of its um, cross reaction with the TB skin test, we, uh, don't use the BCG vaccine because we don't want to, uh, you know, the TB skin test is our primary way of screening individuals for TB infection. And so we don't want that screening tool to be affected by something that could create false positive results. One, and then two, our incidence is too low for the BCG vaccine to be needed. We do not, we are fortunate, we do not have children that we have to worry about developing, um, you know, severe TB because our incidence rates are low in this country. Um, and, you know, versus countries that have much higher rates uh, than the United States are countries like India, the Philippines, China, um, countries where public health systems just don't have the resources to control tuberculosis uh, in the way that we're able to control it in the United States. Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, Jenna, are you- Carl, sorry, can I answer? I don't know if we fully answered Dustin Dorsey's question. He said something about our statement about it, TB remaining in the air for two hours. Oh, right, go ahead. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, so whenever there's a case, we interview them and they share a lot of information to try to protect others in the community. So the reason why I mentioned that is because someone with active TB could cough in a room and then leave. And then those germs remain in the air for one to two hours later. So someone going into the room may never even physically see that person and might get infected that way. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to mention that so that even though our cases want to share you know, all the information about who they might have exposed, there may be times where they don't know who they exposed because they don't know them or they weren't even in the room any longer, but the room sort of contained infectious air still. That's why I wanted to just follow up with that to make sure Dustin understood why we included that. You bet, you bet. It looks, uh, Jenna, do you want to come off mute again? Yes, thank you. Just real quickly, I wanted to ask, um, you mentioned about it being lingering in the room. And, you know, I think all of us heard so much during the pandemic about air exchange and um, updates to people's a HVAC systems and trying to get um, pressure moving. So is that something that you anticipate would help in terms of TV in particular, some of those renovations that um, took place in a lot of buildings that we saw during the pandemic? I think that can be one layer of prevention is having um, more uh, efficient air filtration. Um, I think for TB, slightly different in that, thankfully, as Mira mentioned, the United States, TB is much less common. So we, in Contra Costa County, we probably have around 60 to 75 community members diagnosed with active TB each year. Um, so it's much less common than maybe some other airborne diseases. Um, so certainly, uh, better air quality is going to be beneficial for multiple reasons, whether it's smoke particles or influenza or TB. Um, but if we're focusing just on TB today, I think it's about detection 
of infected folks, treating them before they become um, contagious. And if they're already progressing maybe to active TB, to recognize those symptoms, see a doctor right away so they can be treated and cured. Great, thank you. Um, we're about at time. Is there any uh, last questions from anybody or are we um, in pretty good shape? All right. Looks like uh, looks like uh, you have what you need. Again, uh, a recording of this media conference will be available at CC Health's YouTube channel a little bit later today. Uh, go to cchealth.org and look in the latest news section to find a copy of today's media release. And uh, thank you all for your help in getting the word out. Thanks, everyone.